In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're gonna be looking at the difference between behavior flows and user flows in Google Analytics. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe you've been watching a while and you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so now. We create new content each and every week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. All right, let's get into the content. As we talked about in the opener, we're gonna be looking at the difference between behavior flows and user flows within Google Analytics. So what site owners typically want to know or some of the most common questions that we get are things like, I wanna know where my traffic's coming from. I wanna know which traffic drives the best users. I wanna know what users do once they are actually on my site. And I also wanna know what pages lead to engagement and conversion. All of these questions can really lead to us having a more optimized site a better site that's really uh, focused around our users, but also leveraging the traffic channels that are working best for us. Now, looking at just your session data or your bounce rates or your pages per sessions isn't going to give you the answers to these questions. Those are more high level metrics that are telling you about how many people are on your site and kind of an aggregate of what happens overall. So in order to get the answers to these questions, we actually have to go a little bit deeper. This is where flow visualizations come in. Uh, they're very helpful and they allow you to see the answers to your data instead of having to be you know this data science or having in-depth understanding of BI you can use flow visualizations to reveal the path that users take as they move through your site step by step um, Google built these into GA and this allows you to see this and, and how they move forward and backwards and what happened along the way so these are very helpful tools to help you see how your user moved through your site based on a specific variable. Out of the box, Google Analytics has six default visualizations. They have behavior flow, goal flow, user flow, events flow, funnel visualization, and Google Play referral flow. Like we said in the intro, we're gonna be talking specifically about behavior flow and user flow, uh, but there are other ones inside of this tool that we will cover on videos later down the road. So let's take a look at behavior flow. So the goal of a behavior flow report is to visualize the path that a user travels from one page to the next or one event to the next. So you can actually put a couple of layers of data here. This will help you discover which content is keeping users engaged, what's, what's moving them from one piece of content to another. Um, it can also help you identify where your content is maybe lacking, where a user comes in and they just completely fall out. So this report can display pages, it can do content groups, events, uh, or pages and events. So you can layer a lot of information on this data. So when using behavior flow, you're really looking at the engagement from page to page, how people are moving through your site, what types of behavior are they taking on your site? Are they taking different actions? And if you set up events in analytics, so you can actually see, are they clicking? Are they downloading? Are they scrolling? That data can be layered into your behavior flow to give you a better picture of how somebody so taking a journey through your site and your content. So this is the homepage of Google Analytics. In order to find the behavior flow report, you're gonna go over to the left-hand column, select behavior and select behavior flow. All right, so now we are on the behavior flow report. Now, one of the first things you may be asking yourself is what is the difference between a landing page and a starting page? This is something that also confused me uh, and then that's why we try to learn these things, right? And understand what they are and what, they, what they're helpful for. So a landing page, this is the first page that a user landed on in their very first session. And then the starting page, this is gonna be the first page from the user's current session. So maybe somebody came to your website, they landed on this blog, for instance, but then they had a, another session where they came back and they interacted with another page and that was the current page they started on. So this is how they got into your site, but this is really the beginning of their journey through your site. That's an easier way to think about it. So as you can see here in this report, it tells us how people landed on the website, but then it looks at the next step. Okay, after they landed, um, if they came back or maybe they continued their session, what did they do? Each one of these shows us pages, um, as oftentimes it will group it down here. You can, um, you know, change the flow of how big you want things to see. You can also add steps. Um, you can get a little bit more granule here uh, in your level of detail, so you can show more connections. You can show less connections. Uh, by default, set right in the middle. Now, what it'll do, if you hover over these, it'll say, okay, on the blog page, 94.6% dropped off at this point, so they didn't continue their journey. So this is something that we are addressing internally, because this is something we've seen, that people who land on the blog lobby page 
not a whole lot of them actually move through onto the site. So what can we do now on the blog lobby page to engage them to make sure they're finding that content quickly and helping them take that next step? Uh, as you can see here, things like the own home page is a little bit better, right? With about a 23.4% 23, 20, uh, 23 through rate. And where do they go after that? Well, it's kind of split between blog, contact, resources, inbound, and then we have these things that's 50 more pages. You can actually open up these right here and see the group details to see the pages that they go after that, the through traffic, the drop off rate, all that data up there as well. What analytics is doing in this flow report is taking the main pages, the pages that are moving people through the, uh, through the funnel and engaging with you and trying to help you see those main connections first. As you can see here in this report, my homepage is one of the ones that really drives people back through more than any other. Anytime someone lands on homepage, that's really where it helps them find that other pieces of content, which means our homepage is doing well. Now we need to work on some of these blog pages. Our blog content drives a lot of traffic for us, so that makes sense. And a lot of people coming to our blog Maybe they're not interested in being our clients, again, which is totally fine. The purpose of our blog is to help educate and move people um, forward on their own, really to implement some of these things. So you really have to you know, understand the purpose of your pieces of content, but also look for opportunities and maybe holes where your content's not performing as well as you should. Like for me, an area where I want to focus on is definitely my blog lobby to make sure that people are clicking deeper into other pieces of content. So that's a quick overview of behavior flow. So the user flow report compares the volume of traffic from different sources and it lets us see how those different sources are impacting traffic patterns through our site. So this will tell us how our channels are performing and really how they're sending traffic to our site and also what are those steps they take after they've gotten here. So this again is very helpful to see which type of traffic is impact or engaging with your content. It'll tell us, you know, what's happening with search versus social versus direct traffic versus email. And we can begin to see which type of traffic are actually leading to the types of results that we want on our website. So where do we need to focus more on? So we're back here at Google Analytics and this time we are going to find the user flow. And for user flow, we're gonna click on audience and then all the way down at the bottom, you're gonna see user flow. So very similar to behavior flow, we are going to have a starting point. In this case, it's starting out at country. Uh, this is just what happens by default. So you can see how people from different countries move through your site and your site content. You can change this dropdown. Uh, so you can add things like browser, browser version, data source. Um, you can do something like you know default channel groupings. This is gonna break it down through like organic, direct, social, referral, email. This is nice because it'll say, okay, what's driving the most traffic? For us, it's organic search, far and beyond. Now, if I wanna highlight this through here, and this is something I didn't show, but it works exactly the same in the behavior report. If you click on it, you can say highlight traffic through here. And it's gonna really mute all the other sources and allow you just now to see the traffic coming through organic. So organic drives a lot to our blog, it's under our homepage, but then we've got you know a hundred more pages here. And again, we can go to these group details, a lot of blog content, which makes sense because we, we do create a lot of blog content. But what this will show you again is very similar to the behavior flow. We'll be able to see the through uh, traffic for organic. So we can say, okay, organic seems to you know actually continue the journey, even on this blog, as we noticed in the behavior report, overall it looked like a drop off, but you know, there is some traffic moving through to other pages. And we can begin to compare these channels and see which channel is moving people deeper into our site. You know, we have 11,000 sections and 10K drop-offs. That's something that we wanna look into. And this is something we look into because what can we do to move people further, to take another interaction? Instead of just staying on the page that came in first, what's the difference between people that are going into interactions one, two, and three? Because once they take an interaction, the drop-offs like cut in half and they take another interaction, the same thing. So. Um, are we driving the right people to the right pages? And is this channel source, which is the most effective? If you ever wanna take this highlighting off, you just click it again and click clear highlighting and you're back to the, the original chart. Again, you can add segments up here as well. Uh, work a lot like other Google Analytics reports, but what's nice is you can see the flow and I can see, okay, again, people coming to the blog, a large drop off, uh, coming to this page, a large drop off, but if we can get them into our homepage, we tend to see we tend to see a little bit more interaction and engagement. So 
Very cool reports, very helpful to understand how your users are moving through your site so then you can optimize your site for them. This will help increase your on-page metrics, this will help increase the conversions of your site, this will help make sure that your site is actually delivering business results. All right, let's do a quick recap. Flow visualizations help us see the answers to those important questions at the beginning. It allows us to see how users are moving through our site and helps us to really understand the steps that they're taking. Google Analytics has six out of the box flow visualization charts that you can leverage. But in this video, we talk specifically about behavior flow and user flow. And again, just to recap their behavior flow, the goal of that report is how somebody is engaging from page to page or event by event. So what are they doing inside of the site itself and moving and which content's moving people forward and which content's having people drop off. A user flow is focused on traffic channels or traffic sources. This could even be geolocations and how they engage through the site and what are those effective channels for us and where should we be spending more of our time and energy to ensure we're getting the right ROI. So I hope you learned something from this video today. If you have any questions, please comment below. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. And until next time, happy marketing.